This is the coldest we've been since we started RV life. Not a fan, ready to go south. I'm Tammy and this is my husband, Scott. We are two artists who, when faced with mounting health challenges, decided life's way too short. So we sold our home and moved into a home on wheels. We are now in our second year and an even smaller RV and along with Gracie and Jasper, we are crossing the country in search of new landscapes, experiences, and friends. We'd love to have you join us as we navigate our way through full-time RV life. And till further notice, our mission is explore, create, and inspire. It's about to get really cold. And now that our fireplace is out, which is another source of heat. This thing burned out right away and I thought we smelled something. And now I'm, I'm seeing it. It's, it's right there. The electric wires to this thing are fried. And now we're just filling in gaps with insulation because it's supposed to get down to 20 something tonight. Air conditioner weather seal. And what that is, it's just like little, maybe an inch and a quarter square foam insulation. That's what I'm tucking in on the under, underside of the slide behind the sweep. Because there's places where the sweep's been pinched and it comes down and the wind just blows straight in. And with this on the inside of the slide and on the outside of the slide, we shouldn't have any air coming through there at all. I thought of something that would work better than that. Having the slide seals work properly. Just a thought. Thought I'd show you our campsite at Chatfield State Park here in Colorado. I definitely will pick this one again when we come. It's private, it's got trees around it, it's tucked away. We have deer in our yard, an owl that comes and visits. It's really nice. But if you're in a bigger rig, you might want one of the pull through sites. But for our new smaller rig, this is perfect. So I'm gonna show you our campsite in case you wanna come check it out too. So there's no one behind us. And then the bike trail's right back there and the lake's right back there. It's a great state park and it's a really nice location for when we're in Denver. It's a beautiful fall evening. We're riding our bicycles around Chatfield Reservoir and we brought you over here to Slocum's Cabin because we wanted to show this off. Built in 1852 by a trapper. Um, it was relocated here uh, from his homestead. It's possibly one of the oldest structures in Colorado is what it says here. Apparently Chief Colorado of the Ute Indian tribe liked to come visit Slocum's family and he enjoyed biscuits slathered in syrup. But check this out. His wife, himself, and three kids lived in this little tiny cabin. Five people lived in there tiny living. It, it's not a trend, it's always been the way of life. This fireplace has been here since 1852. The fireplace in our brand new Bolano, it's being replaced after what, is it a month? Yeah. We contemplated renting a pontoon boat when we had the whole family together last weekend. Is that fish over there? Yeah, there's fish over there. But honestly, we had a lot more fun just carrying some chairs down to the shore and letting Liam play in the water, and it was perfect. Now that is an antique. Look at that, it's even got a, a quarter slot, which I don't really want to touch, but yeah, it's jammed. Well, shall we head back to camp? What's for dinner? We don't need dinner because I just ate about a pound of bugs on this bike ride. A little protein. Oh, actually, I, I forgot that we had a, a late lunch and we had we went to our old Greek restaurant and you got the shawarma salad. So shawarma salad for lunch, shawarma insects for dinner. It's all good. 
Good morning. Today is rug up day. Our new RV came with totally different steps, so I had to buy some new step covers for it and thought I'd bring you along for the ride. Installation looks pretty easy peasy. I don't even need your help for this one, babe. Well, that's good. I'm gonna grab a beer and go fishing. Step one, unroll rug. Lay flat until straightened. Have no fear. When you pull them out, they will look curly. But look, in a few minutes, they are flat and ready to go. And these are really thick, high quality rugs. You might freak out a little bit when you see how much these rugs are per step, but I expect these to last the life of the time we have our RV. So if you look at it in the big grand scheme of things, it's not that big a deal. Get yourself some step covers. Step two, clean and dry surface. I mean, how clean does it need to be? Is that good? Step three, attach Velcro strips at the rear of the rug. So the skinny Velcro strip is the back. Not rocket science, so we got this. Step four, center the rug on the step. Step five, remove white film to expose expose the glue. <laughs> Apply pressure to the rug. Do a little boot scoot and boogie. Do the shuffle. Adhere these steps. Adhere these steps. Not only do you get to apply the steps, but you get a little exercise. It's a win-win. They look pretty nice. I like them. And I like that you can just take them off and wash them too. If you're interested in getting yourself some rug up lippered step covers, I'll put a link in the description below the video. No, we're not sponsored. I'm just having a little too much fun with my step covers. We got the Kurt 60 inch hitch rack. We're gonna see if we can comfortably get the bicycles to sit back here. It's supposed to be a 300 pound weight rating on the two inch receiver. Fingers crossed that the welder did his job right that day. The reason we're doing this is with the smaller rig, we have very little storage space underneath compared to the cavernous storage that we had on the Grand Design. This thing has a shoebox of underneath storage. So anyway, we're just trying to take that edge off. So you can't tell right now, but I've got a lot of stuff here that we're trying to get rid of. But both bicycles fit easily into the opening here which it isn't that big of an opening. So the fold down bicycles really do save a lot of space. With that said, it still was taking up about two thirds of our storage space just to keep the bicycles inside. And not really sure it's worth going that route. Now, if the bumper falls off and they didn't weld it correctly and we lose $4,000 worth of bicycles and perhaps get into trouble with the law then we'll be second guessing this decision thank you for being so positive about this idea babe we bought a receiver pin that locks but it also torques down to a degree and it should stabilize it We'll find out. And these are the worst instructions I've seen in a long time. At this point, all I've really learned is that there's choking hazards in the package. That's it. That's it. I have no idea what what is that for. And the pictures don't tell me and the words are in French. To try and react what it's going to be like going down the road behind the fifth wheel and see if we think this is going to hold our bikes. I weigh approximately plenty of weight to test this theory out. and want to know what the heck we're doing.
Now we're gonna try the bikes out on them. It looks kind of small. I'm thinking we should have got a longer rack. So they're both about 70 pounds with the batteries, so they should be 60 pounds each without the batteries. It should be well under 200 pounds, which you saw the sticker. Do you believe the sticker? Right now, what I believe is that we got too small of a bike rack and these aren't gonna fit. That's what I'm believing right now. <laughs> did you measure our bikes before you bought this bike rack? I did, I did measure. And as long as they're not too tall, the wheels are gonna fit inside the 60 inches. How low down we can get them without turning the wheels, I don't know. So if we can't get them to go in straight, hopefully we can get them to go in when they're folded in half. So you didn't measure them. See what I'm saying though? Yeah, that's not, that's good for one bike. <laughs> You're such a smart ass. I knew it was gonna be close and it, it would have worked fine, but these rails are like eight inches high and that's what's keeping it from working. You insisted on getting the rails. So the bikes fit on it folded. We're just trying to decide it's better to put like extra outdoor cargo back here and put the bikes inside or vice versa. Stay tuned, we'll let you know what we decide. Big decisions in this RV life, big decisions. Would you put your very expensive e-bikes on the back or in the compartment? What would you do? Comment below and let us know. We're at a loss. We don't want to lose these bikes. We already lost our kayak. This is the land of the misfit pumpkins. We need to keep going. Oh, now we're discriminating against pumpkins because they're not photogenic? <laughs> <laughs> what happened to it? Do you want to give him a little pat to make him feel better? Yeah. These, these pumpkins over here have experienced a lot of adversity in their life. We got to go over to we the more high class pumpkin area. Bye, pumpkin. Back at the RV, the family all left. Our heart aches a little bit and it's time to say goodbye especially to the little grands. We're still at Chatfield and then we'll head on down to Southern Colorado soon. Jasper loves these campgrounds where there's natural surroundings. We gotta keep an eye on him because he's getting so comfortable with the RV life that he is starting to run out the door and go exploring. So we're trying to get him out on his leash and harness. <laughs> Hi baby. Are you getting all shaky? Yeah. Huh? While we're in Denver, our vet, who is an at-home vet, is coming out to our RV to do the animals yearly checkups, blood works, shots, and medication refills. So I asked if she would come out to our RV at the state park, and she said sure. So the pets are going to get their annuals today, and we're going to do chores, and then we're going to head out tomorrow. Now that laundry is going, it's time to get back to editing videos for you guys. We wanted to say thank you so much for all of our followers. It amazes us every day when we get a new subscriber because it's like who really cares about watching us. But some people care, so I'm going to keep making videos for you. We're on our way to Southern Colorado to spend Thanksgiving with the folks on their beautiful property, so we'll show that off to you. They have a big log house and beautiful views of the Spanish peaks, and we're hoping we don't get snowed in and stuck and cold, because we want to head south. Even though we love our family, we want to head south. We don't want to get trapped in a blizzard. We've had Thanksgivings where we've had several feet of snow and we all got trapped. I mean, it could be fun as long as we can get out.
every time I do this, I forget that I need to have the stairs up. If you have that door shut and the stairs are down and you're moving your levels, you're probably gonna destroy your front door. So don't do that. All right, just hitched up. Scott's doing his final hookups and then I will get out, do a walk around and check lights and then help him pull out and miss these trees is the plan, hopefully. And while I'm waiting, I will get the GPS's going and get my RV Trip Wizard app GPS going as well because that seems to be a pretty good one that doesn't lead us astray too much. Left and right. My left or your left? Can I just say driver and passenger? Left or driver. All right. All right. Over the hills and through the woods to grandmother's house we go. There's laughing and playing and looking in rear view mirrors. I don't know the rest of this. I'm immersed in autumn. <laughs> now that laundry is going, Flies, flies.